but tribal government gaming is providing for communities that have had a history of struggle. In addition to that, the things we're strategizing on at the National Indian Gaming Association is to continue to build our economies. Hello, I'm Kimberly with Indian Country TV, and I'm here with Ernie Stevens, Jr., the chairman of the National Indian Gaming Association. He's going on his eighth term and 15 years with the organization. Tell me about what you just had a conference that was just held. Yeah, San Diego, California. Uh, probably uh, close to 7,000 of our folks from the industry were there. and Mostly we, we uh, talked about legislation and a lot of our priorities in Indian gaming. We had a lot of business things going on. A lot of great things happening, a lot of training and thing. we, things. We were really excited about what happened in San Diego. Was, again, our, our record numbers. and We always say it's the biggest trade show ever, but this one literally in terms of statistics and numbers and actual presence was our largest show in our history. How does it feel to have Indian Country bringing you back for an eighth term? Well, you know, it's a, it's um, it's everything that, that that I live for. Not so much being in the in this capacity, but being able to help people. I watch both of my parents help people. I watch my grandparents, my aunts and uncles help people. I watch my my brothers and sisters and my children help people. That's what we do. So. To be in this capacity, um, I would never have imagined that I would be starting my 15th year in this capacity, but it gives us an opportunity to fight for Indian people and to fight for tribal sovereignty and stand in, in favor of uh, things that are great. There's, there's a big gaming world out there, but our world is tribal government gaming, and we are supplying needs very much. We are supplying needed things to our communities and so that's the difference and we you know uh, Las Vegas is cool we have nothing to say bad about Las Vegas or Atlantic City and anything like that but tribal government gaming is providing for communities that have helped, had a history of struggle in addition to that the things we're strategi strategizing on at the National Indian Gaming Association is to continue to build our economies and with that we're going to have to figure out how to do it with and beyond just gaming so a lot of discussion on economic development as well. That's one of the key components that we discussed and we unveiled a study that we're doing to strategize on how we can continue to move Indian gaming forward, but also do it with and beyond other ideas and thoughts on um, economic development. Because a lot of tribes out there don't have the market. Some of them just be able to create, are being able to create jobs. Some of them don't have any gaming. And we have to figure out how to, how to help them, how to stand with them. All of them are strong, all of them are powerful, all of them have a great and beautiful communities, but jobs are, 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 are not uh, uh, um, visible in, in many of them. So we have to create jobs, that's our bottom line. What are some examples of the efforts you guys are working on with different tribes across the country? Well, I think that you know, protecting our communities through the legislation and, and uh, guard, safeguarding any legislation, I think that one of the key um, uh, victories in Indian country was is not a, a not a, a a national Indian gaming victory or any individual victory. It was a, a unified approach in protecting our rights as governments to supply education and general welfare benefits to our tribal members. And we were a little bit uh, under a, a, uh, a press by the Internal Revenue Service to to tax uh, government services and government uh, provided uh, items and. Um, it was getting to be with education and, and uh, health care benefits and different things like that. It was, uh, it was a major thing uh, for us. Uh, we banded together and we fought this fight and uh, it culminated in the uh, general welfare exclusion, a law that went through in the fall time that uh, protects tribes. It was, a, it was a major, major victory for us and we will never know how much we preserved for Indian country by winning this victory. And again, it was a it was a unified uh, victory in Indian country. And from the standpoint of uh, having to be under that kind of siege in, in, with tribal governments, that's one thing. But to even have to fight that fight, tribes have been uh, recognized as governments since, time, since, since the, uh, the uh, uh, United States Constitution was established. Um, a lot of the, uh, lot of the uh, rules and things that the United States go by were established through their study of a lot of the tribal governments, uh, how they operated. So um, it's key that, that uh, 
uh, governments should not be taxed. And we established that and we won that victory. And, you know, from my, my father who lives in the nursing home, his standpoint was we should never have been fighting it. And uh, it's something that we, we should never have been having to spend so much energy doing to protecting our right to provide to our government, to our communities through tribal government gaming. It's a battle that never should have been had, had never should have had to fight. But yet, because we were fighting, it was that significant because we won that battle. We won that battle through education and standing together and providing for our tribes. There's a lot of issues going around Indian country with mining. Mm -hmm. There's some, been some victories and not some victories. You want, you want to talk about Niagara's involvement with any of that? Yeah, I think that, that uh, this is a very serious issue for us. And, um, you know, well, we've had some excellent developments here in, in, uh, in northern Wisconsin, but it's been a major battle for us. And, you know, I really, uh, uh, I really take a look at it from the standpoint, well, all the Native American f family, and many of which are non-Indians too, helping us fight this fight because they understand the value of this, of this land that we walk on. It's not about money, it's about preservation. It's about our being able to survive in, in this, uh, this land we call the Turtle Island. And so while we've taken a giant step forward here in northern Wisconsin, we take a setback in Arizona at Oak Flat. And so NIGA has a resolution, and we've been working with the, all the tribes across the country because there's no regional aspect here. If they're, if they're coming after Mother Earth in northern Wisconsin or Arizona or California or wherever, it's a fight for all of us. And so this uh, Oak Flat... Um, uh, victory for, for the mining company is a setback for us. But to think that, that we are not, or that we're out of the picture, that we're going to sit back and watch this happen, uh, is, it's not the case. The tribes continue to fight and educate and stand strong. We've had a uh, ceremony and, and a lot of different discussions. We've had um, folks that have actually been right to the site. And, you know, what we're trying to do is just trying to uh, stand strong and it's still like GWE or anything else like that. It's educating America about how wrong this is. You just you just don't go and, and uh, you don't do what do what they want to do to Mother Earth any place in my opinion. But this is sacred sites. This is where um, for time immemorial that we've had our ceremony and our, our burial grounds and things like that. It's uh it may be normal for, for some aspects in history that for people who just could could live with themselves by desecrating these sites, but it's never been normal for any country. Sacred is sacred. And so we continue this battle here and any place else where people uh, continue to desecrate and, and uh, uh, show a, a, a common disrespect for our culture, our way of life. And I think the best way to describe it is that we we respect all cultures. Our, our parents, our tradition, our generations have always taught us to, whether it's the church or whatever den denomination, whatever religion, we respect one another. And right here, it's, it's, it's a sad day and time that in 2000 or 2015, we are fighting this fight. It's really a sad time. But um, we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll be um, polite and cordial but we will not stand down. We're going to continue to fight for Mother Earth. What are some of the efforts you have coming up in your next term? Well, I think that uh, getting this economic development study done is a high priority. Continuing to, uh, to uh, monitor uh, the world of Internet gaming. Um, it's a, it's a, a subject that is continuing, a subject that people seem to be one minute to want to do an opposite or opposed to it, but then, but then they want to carve out some certain industries. Um, what we're saying about internet is, um, you know, I personally don't think it's going to be save the world eco economically, but that's not my job to decide that. If folks see that as a, uh, as a, as a prominent economic development arm, then so be it. Then, then uh, if we can create jobs and create opportunity for tribes, then it has, then we have to move forward with that. And to that extent, so. I don't think it saves American economy, but I think it adds to not just American economy, but to our tribal economy. But it's not fair if you write that, if you carve anybody out, you got to respect the tribes, respect the tribal compacts, respect that you cannot uh, tax, tax tribes, and respect our ability to regulate that industry. So 
Um, we have a, um, a standing position, several points that our tribes have established through many meetings, and we'll continue to meet on that. We're going to meet on it again next month at the Great Plains um, Indian Gaming, Great Plains of Midwest Indian Gaming Conference. So we're going to keep keep monitoring this and keep trying to stay focused on it. And wherever we can create opportunity for for uh, economic development, we want to stay focused. But right now, right now, the thoughts and ideas around it is again are again like an imbalance to favoring some folks, but kind of leaving the potentially. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Potentially leaving our economies out in the cold on this. So if they want to do a, um, what do they call it a uh, a ban on internet gaming, then ban it. But if they're going to carve anybody out, we want to be at the front line because we're tribal or we're sovereign tribal governments, and we can um, utilize this into to the best advantage and be effective at it and uh, be a very uh, clean and regulated industry as well. So we'll just kind of wait and see. Is there any message you would like to leave with Indian country or anything that we've left out? I think Mother Earth is our message today, and while we're uh, advocate and standing strong for tribal government gaming. I think that as we head into the springtime, we again we we uh, uh, we relish the uh, as the uh, leaves start uh, start to uh, turn green, and we uh, I think Mother Earth is always beautiful, but springtime is special. Springtime brings us graduations and family gatherings and and things like that. So, you know, I think we just head into the spring and do a lot of great things. But in Washington D.C., we will be on the front line. And as long as uh, Congress is in session, uh, tribes from all over the country will be there educating and statesmanlike and providing the kind of education that Washington needs to understand and appreciate why we stand so firm and not just protecting tribal sovereignty, not just protecting our communities, but what we need to do is build our communities, build them forward. And there's a lot of challenges out in this world related to our teenagers our young folks, well, we got to provide for them. We got to help them understand their role because the best leaders in Indian country helping young people are the, them, the young people themselves. So we want to press forward with um, thinking about our young people, thinking about our community, and while we, we stand and fight for sovereignty and fight for our community, our, uh, we have a real strong young population. We want to provide them an opportunity to build to the next generations to come. So I'm a big advocate for understanding and appreciating young people no matter where they are in their life. And I think that they, they can continue to help themselves. And again, we have so many challenges in different communities to, with our young, uh, young folks. I call them young leaders because they're their own role models in this world. So I, I think in the springtime it's kind of has that, that mode of school and finishing out the year and, and coming together. It's beautiful, but um, Standing, standing strong and appreciating our community and helping young folks and um, rebuilding. That's the key here. So we're excited about that. I'm always excited about spring. And you know, when I, uh, when I got elected uh, 14 years ago, I said to the constituency, to the member tribes, that my campaign is my work. So I don't have a lot of signs or a lot of buttons or anything like that. We'll get hit the ground running. And I looked at the newspaper the other day. The last time I was home was March 23rd. Oh. So I'm trying to get home tonight. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. But again, uh, we won't stay long. We just keep working. My job is in Washington, D.C. My job is right here in the heart of Indian country. This is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world, right here in Lacoudere. This is where my job is. And it's one of the greatest honors every time I get to community. Even sometimes it's celebrations. Sometimes it's sad times. I've been to a, a couple of funeral services and uh, sometimes it's sad but nonetheless it's an honor to stand within your country to be in the heart of Indian country so when I get back to Washington DC I know who I represent and what I stand for I stand for those elders I stand for those communities I stand for their education that's what I stand for so I'm excited about get back to work and again my 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 campaign is my work I want to thank you for joining me Kimberly Acosta with Indian Country TV no regional aspect here if they're if they're coming after mother earth in northern wisconsin or arizona or california or wherever it's a fight for all of us